Hey there, before we even start the intro music, I wanted to jump in real quickly and let you know that this is part two of this particular interview. So jump back in time one episode. It should be episode 62. And make sure to check out the first part of Tony Jacobs' interview because it, this man has a fantastic story and we just couldn't fit it all into to one week's episode without it being extra super long. So go back, check out that one before you go into this one because there's no banter or anything. We're jumping straight into the where we left off from last week. So uh, go listen to that one first if you have not. If you have, awesome and enjoy the uh, podcast. <music> Hello and welcome to the Keto Man's Club podcast. We're glad you're here, where each week we talk about men's health and lifestyle. We do so with the foundation of the ketogenic diet and lifestyle. If you don't know what keto is, stick around and you'll find out. The podcast will bring you real honest fun. Each week we strive to uncover the tips and tricks that you can use in your everyday life to maximize your overall health and find the clearest path to becoming the best version of yourself that you were meant to be. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's a, <laughs> how do I follow that up? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll just go with the, the, the natural uh, progression here. So now we're, we're back to August of 2018. Uh, yeah. The seed is implanted and is, is growing. Yeah. And um, how did it go from there? Oh, man. Well, it, it, you know, here's the crazy part. It, it, it went well. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I, I literally got onto the computer and, and I started researching things. And of course, you know, when, when you struggle with weight for that long, you've done a little bit of everything, right? You've dabbled in, in, in Weight Watchers back in 2005. I had, I had dabbled a little bit in, uh, in, in Adkins and, and, you know, paleo, like I had done all different types of things and tried it, but you know, of course, obviously nothing ever lasted. Um, but I kept coming across, you know, this, this word, you know, keto and I had no idea what it meant um, other than I remembered back when I was doing, you know, the Atkins things, I remember ketosis and I'm like, okay, it must have, it must have to do something with that. So I started digging a little bit deeper and, and every, every blog that I could get, every resource uh, that I could get, I just started reading up on it. You know, I just started doing my research and the more research that I did, um, it started to just kind of resonate with me. It just made sense. And I thought, this sounds like something that I can do. And why not start, you know, whatever? Well, I had I had an Instagram account and I started just putting in the hashtags, you know, just hashtag keto, keto lifestyle, you know, different things like that. And of course, you guys know, you know, a whole bunch of uh a whole bunch of people start popping up and you start going and you're looking at their transformation picks and you know, like, is this, is this for real? Like, is this really happening? Or is this just like the next, you know, fad diet that's out there and it's going to be gone in six months. But the more I started reading people's stories, I, I started to realize like, I think this is, this is legitimately like a real thing. I started reaching out to, uh, to some peeps, you know, like literally strangers. And, and because I'm such a relational guy, uh, the way people respond to me, says a lot to me about really kind of like who they are. Will they take the time for me? You know, will they, will they answer a stupid question from a random stranger that's close to 400 pounds? You know what I mean? And I'll tell you what, guys, I was, I was blown away by the responses I was getting from people that I was reaching out to, you know, Hey, I know you're just starting, but Hey, we're here for you. Hey, reach out anytime. Hey, here, Here's some here's some resources for you. Hey, go check this out. Hey, have 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 you heard of this? Have you heard of that? Are you fasting? Are you you know? Th there was all this terminology that I was completely new to, but people were helping me through you know through that process, and I instantly felt a connection, kind of like all the way back when I was 11 years old, when I walked into that church, walked in to see this band play, and I felt an instant connection to the people around me, and I knew that something was different it, it, it kind of had that same feeling for me. And I all of a sudden found myself in, in the middle of this huge community of people that actually seemed to like be rooting for me uh, as I started my process, as I was asking the dumb questions, because it, they never made me feel like they were dumb questions. 
They validated me. They made me feel like I mattered. And, and I just, I kind of took off and it was guys, it was messy at first, you know, <laughs> it was, you know, you've seen those memes, you know, with like, you know, my first two months of keto and it's like this whole, like, you know, table full of like bacon and eggs and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, yep, that, that was me. Well, hey, you, well, you got to admit when, when bacon <laughs> is perceived as a health food and taking off the, taken off of the forbidden list. Yeah, I think uh, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who didn't go a little <laughs> overboard on bacon. And there's only one way I found out that eating an entire pound of cooked bacon gives me heartburn, and it wasn't <laughs> by guessing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was probably something that took repeated tries to learn. And confirm. <laughs> and while, right. I'm like, maybe I need to step this bag. Heartburn after eating a pile of meat doesn't. You know, that, that just <laughs> something about that just doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's awesome though. <laughs> but, you know, just, it just, you know, it, it all just started to make sense for me. And so I started to tweak things. I started to ask more kind of edu- you know, educated questions to, to people that were reaching back. And, and I started, you know, formulating a plan. Um, and before you know it, I was, I was on track and I was, I was losing weight. I was feeling, I was feeling like a million bucks, you guys, you know, I just, I felt better even the small amounts of weight that I was losing in the beginning, I, I, I could see the difference in my body. I could see it. Um, I was sleeping better, even though I'm still, you know, using the, the CPAP machine, even my sleep was, was better and I was more rested and, and things just rapidly started changing for me. Uh, the tight four X was slowly becoming a loose four X and within, you know, not very long, I was able to get back into some three X's, and, uh, you know, that eventually dropped down to two X and just in the last few weeks, I, I got into a, to a single X and, um, that felt really good, you know? So, and I, I'm hoping I told my wife, I said, gosh, I hope I can get into a large one of these days. And she just laughed at me. She's like, your, your shoulders are too broad. So now I feel challenged. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, yeah. I, I always claim to be an extra medium because I don't like admitting that I'm a grown man who wears a medium. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's, I don't know if there's a something that you can make up that's that's large, but you know, bigger than large. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's perfect. But you know, just just all those things taking place, you know, and then and then of course the pant size, uh, you know, went from went from a a button popping, you know, forty eight. Um, and I'm down to right now, I'm currently wearing a 36. Um, wow. Yeah. You know, I just, I just, every time I see that 36, I just go, wait, I'm going to wake up, you know, like I feel like I'm going to wake up from a dream and I'm going to still be in the bathroom on that bad day. But every day I wake up and I realize, no, this, this is actually happening. I, I really did take control of this and, and I'm so thankful for it because I feel like, I, I just feel like a completely new person and uh, it's been amazing. You know, just the energy I have, the outlook on life that I have has, has just been, you know, night and day for me. No, absolutely. And yeah. uh, everybody seems to have this moment. Do you specifically remember a moment where you just like, you know, were walking past a reflective surface and call like a side glimpse of yourself and you kind of had to do a double take like, Hey, who's that guy? <laughs> yeah. So thanks for this question. I was just thinking about this the other day. So I was at a, I was at a store in the mall and, um, I, I was, it was at a moment where I was, I was getting close to reaching the hundred pound mark and I was passing by the big and tall section, you know, or the, uh, large and fluffy, whatever, whatever section you want to call it. Right. But I spend a lot of my, a lot of my days there, you know, looking for clothes, but there was a, you know, there was a mirror, right. That was right outside. And as I'm walking by that section, I, I looked up and I saw the big and tall section and I realized I'm like, man, that like, it's, it's a distant memory, but it, it's not that distant. Well, when I looked down, I realized that I was looking at myself in the mirror and I just, it, it really just kind of hit me you know, pretty hard, like, you know, you, this, that's not you anymore. You, you've, you've removed yourself from there. You're never going to shop in this section again. 
and it was just kind of that quick moment of just realizing like how far I had come. And man, it was, it was a special moment. I think I even, I think I even took a picture of it and posted it on, uh, uh, I think I did it on my Instagram page and, uh, and everybody was like, that's so awesome, man. You know, like you, you've come so far, but you know, one thing I'm realizing though, that just because I've come so far, like, and I, and I'm not all the way at my goal, you know, I'm still, I'm still reaching and I'm still growing and learning. Um, every day it has to be a conscious choice to, to run after the things that are important to me. Um, it has to, because, you know, you, you let up, you give up, you set back. And before you know it, sometimes some of, some of the old defaults can try to creep in and you got to be mindful of those things. And so that's, that's something that that day really reminded me, like, don't let, don't let that former self come back and, and get the better, betterment of you, you know, stand in, in who you are and who you're becoming and, uh, and run with it, man. So did you, um, did you ever hate your body? Uh, yeah, I mean, hate's such a strong word, you know, but I know, you know, I intentionally use that because it is, I mean, I mean, honestly, because of your, your religious connections and whatnot, I mean, yeah, 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 it's, we can all have a love hate relationship with our physical body for sure. Yeah. I, I think, I think I did. I, I, I think I hated not just the body, but I think I hated the person that I was, that I was, had become and that was continuing, you know, like hating myself for not stopping and saying enough is enough, you know, and, and, and not being pleased with who I was and how I looked and how I felt. And, you, you know, for so long, you just, you avoid dressing rooms and you avoid mirrors and scales and, you know, all those things. And, but when I would get a glimpse, I just remember just feeling so like, I just remember feeling so defeated, but it was one of those things, you know, when you feel defeated, but you have no motivation to to do anything about it. You just, Mm -hmm. you just sit in the, in the defeat, but there's no part of you that's like lighting the fire under you. And I think I just did that so long. And so I think, I think when you say that it's kind of a loaded question because not only did I hate my body, I just hated everything that I had become. Well, yeah. tell us, or go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna. So we we've, we've talked about kind of your your you shared about your upbringing and whatnot. Were you a big kid at all? Yeah. Did you have weight issues as a little kid? And yeah, I was always you know I always had the the inner tube you know <laughs> kind of around my tummy and and yeah. uh, I I always remember you know this was back when you know mom was uh, shopping shopping at Sears. And I was, Uh, I know where you're going, going. (laughs) you know, and, and help me with my, my memories going guys, but it was like the huff, like the huffy section or the hefty section or husky. husky. Yeah. The husky, you know, and, and, uh, and of course my mom was the worst. She had no like social like grace and she would literally, I don't know if she would literally like open up a pack of underwear. Okay. And she would, (laughs) she, she would hold them up to me right in the middle of the store. We're not in the dressing room. We're like in the aisle. And I just have like this bad memory of her doing this to me. And I'm like, I, I think I'm scarred for life. You know, like I'm never mm-hmm. going to be able to like live that down, you know, but you know, and I just kind of even remember her saying, Oh, these aren't going to be big enough for you. You know, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, you fast forward to high school and I still remember the coach coming to the football coach, coming to the door, knocking on the door and having a, having a conversation with my mom and just saying, what is it going to take to get Tony to come and be a linebacker or a lineman on the field? And she's like, he has absolutely no interest in playing for your football team. Cause at that point I, you know, my head was in, uh, was in the guitar and rock and roll and growing my hair out. And, you know, the, I didn't want to be a jock. I didn't want to be on a, on a football field. It just wasn't who I was, you know? Yeah. Um, and of course I didn't have a dad in my life. You know, it was just me and mom. And so I didn't have a dad in my life to come and say, hey, by the way, you could probably do both and you'd probably do really well. You probably play football and you could probably shred a guitar, too. Like just FYI. But, you know, mom, mom wasn't wired that way. She knew that that was kind of my passion. And so we kind of put all the eggs in that basket back in those days. Um, But, yeah, I did. I struggled with it as a kid. And and then I thinned out a little bit. Um, in my late teens and then in the, in the rock star days, 
you know, I, I, I did, I looked, I looked the part, I, I was thin, I had the hair, you know, did all that. And then I got married and then it was, like, it was all downhill. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's going to, if she listens, she's going to be like, really, you're going to put it on me. I'm like, no, none of it's on you. It just, you start to just kind of get comfortable. And of course you guys know the part of, you know, I jumped into student ministry and that was, you know, pizza, nachos, and you know, all the junk food for, for way too long. So having yeah. been a youth pastor, I totally know exactly yes. how that is. You do. Um, we, we did, uh, we did pizza nights on Sundays, uh, regularly, um, yeah. when things weren't quite going right or whatever, it was our backup plan. Um, yeah. so absolutely understand that. Um, now you hit on something and, and, um, I don't want to divert too much from from the path that we've been on, but okay. I do want to do want to uh, talk a little bit about and and ask the question, it, mainly because our our audience is largely men. That that's yep. you know where we target. We we've got a pretty pretty specific. <laughs> role. Um, right. I was going to say I was going to say other than my wife and my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, oh, and another. I think we've got Brett. We've got Brett Stapley's wife also yeah. as a live yeah. okay. yes. three, 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 four. Three, we got three. We got three. <laughs> oh, and we've got uh, we've got um, our keto kitchen lady, Carrie, Carrie, Carrie Brown. Brown. Carrie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We got four. Oh, whopping four. Growing we, up. We got, a, we got a few women listening out there, but um, growing up with that without a dad, and I had the same situation. Yeah. It's really impactful. Do you believe that that had an impact on your overall health? Oh, a- absolutely. Um, because my relationship with food and, and the unhealthy part of it, it really did start with how I was raised. You know, mom was working two, three jobs, you know, a lot of the time just to kind of keep things afloat and make sure that, that you know, I had food and a place, place to live and clothes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But because of how she lived mom had an unhealthy relationship with food. And so we turned to food a lot for comfort. Um, I think she bribed me a lot with food and treats and, you know, those kind of things. She would stock the, she would stock the house with anything I wanted because she knew that she was probably going to be gone for, you know, X amount of time. And I was going to be home alone and Hey, might as well have some treats and some snacks. And so I kind of, I was kind of a free for all, you know, like I could have whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And, um, that became very much a part of who I was. And, and because I was so alone growing up, dad wasn't around mom's working. And because I was so alone, I was, I did, I turned to food and, and as a kid, you can't articulate that, but then you, you know, you, you get older like us now. And all of a sudden, you know, wow, like, not only do I hate being alone, I don't like the idea of feeling abandoned. What am I going to turn to? Well, I'm going to eat this because at least it gives me some kind of comfort in the moment of these feelings that I'm having, you know, and, and, and until you're able to articulate some of that, um, you don't realize that it's a problem, you know? And, um, yeah, so it did, man, it was tough growing up, you know, with, with, I, I think I was always the only kid at that time in my life, you know, that, that didn't have a dad and, and it was hard. Kids would ask questions and I came up with all kinds of stories, telling them all kinds of things that weren't true, you know, just, just to kind of pacify it and get the attention off of the fact that I didn't have a dad, you know? Yeah. yeah it's so tough. Yeah. So, um, so we're, we, we're, you, you've gotten into keto, you, you've started making the changes, you're starting to see the changes and, and everything's going well. Um, kind of take us, take us forward from that. How did family react? Um, your wife, your kids, um, extended family, your mom, you know, things like that. What, what, what was going on with all that? Yeah. Well, I mean, the family, you know, right away started to see the change. They started to see a little bit of a kind of a pep to my step and, I think they started seeing a, a real difference really quick and they, they were being as encouraging as they could, you know, and I'd come out with, uh, you know, the next size down in a shirt and they, they would, the girls would kind of make a big deal about it, you know? And, uh, and I started, you know, just started feeling, feeling good. And I remember, so my daughter was in, uh, my oldest was in California, uh, working the, uh, college, um, leadership, uh, thing for Disney has this leadership program. 
and she was working at Disney. And so we, we went, uh, spring of what was it? 2019. And I had lost at that point, I'm trying to remember, it might've been, you know, 50, 50 pounds, 60 pounds, something like that. And she comes to pick us up at the airport and she comes over and she wraps her arms around me and she looks up at me with, with her eyes a little bit leaky. And she says, you know what? I've never in my entire life been able to put my arms around you all the way where my fingers could touch on the other side. Yeah. You know, and I, of course I lost it, you know, because I'm just a big fat baby. And, and so we're having this moment at, at, you know, John Wayne international airport and like, it was awesome. And she just looked up at me. She's like, I'm so proud. You look so good. And you've come, you know, you've come so far. And I, I just was going like, wow, that's, that's awesome. You know, like that feels so good. And so family's been, you know, very supportive. Of course, my mom, you know, um, my mom has struggled with her weight um, over the years and, and still to this day, you know, still does. But, um, you know, I, and she's, she's back in California, you know, I send her, I'm sending her pics and, you know, if I'm on somebody's podcast, I'm sending her the links so she can hear, you know, some of the things that I'm talking about to people and, and she loves it. So we have our fifth female listener now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Tony's mom, you know, Um, but she, you know, she's been nothing but, but supportive and she's, she's cheering for me from California. And every time I send her a pic, you know, like a side by side or something, like she always just says like, I don't, I'm speechless. Like, I don't have words for this. It's not even the same person anymore. Like it's you, but it's not you, you know? And she's just so happy uh, that I finally got, you know, control of it because she knows her own struggles and, you know, and she's put a lot of blame on herself. And I, and I finally had to kind of get with her and just say, look at, you did the best you could as a mom raising me and, and doing what you could, like, you got to stop that. At some point I had to turn the corner and those choices, when I became an adult, especially, those were my choices. I have to own those. Those are not on you anymore. You need to you need to forgive yourself for for this, and you need to like be okay with it. I love you. I've moved on. I've forgiven you. This is about me now. Changing me. It, it has nothing to do with you. And so, I think for the most part, I think ninety percent of the time, I think she's able to believe that. <laughs> you know, so. So I want to ask a question that. Um may come off a little bit offensive and I truly don't mean it this way, but I, okay. I, I it's because of what I've grown up with in churches and whatnot. I grew up in churches where the fellowship hall gets filled uh, a few Saturdays in the summertime for pancake breakfast. Yeah. Or you do the big um, Thanksgiving dinner the weekend before Thanksgiving and there's 45 pounds of mashed potatoes and things. Yeah. And you've got a lot. And I, I'm in Indiana. Um, I'm in Bloomington, so a little bit south of where you used to live, but oh, it is nice. very much that uh, throw yep. some grease in a skillet and fry it up and all of that kind of stuff for every church event. Yeah, sure is. So how how in your during this transition into keto and everything, is that kind of the way it has been for you for church events and so on? Or what are you doing? Because that's so much a part of your life and who you are that you... I mean, you obviously can say, I'm good at the moment. I don't need that. But yet you still have to be involved in those things. So how are you adapting to yep. the, those daily and weekly activities? And so on? Yeah, it's it's really knowing my calendar, knowing what's coming up and being like ultra prepared for if I know that we're going to go and, you know, there's going to be a church picnic and everybody's going to be there and, every, you know, I'm bringing my own, you know, to a lot of these things I'm bringing, I'm bringing my own food. Uh, my wife, a lot of times will cook. Uh, you know, things that she knows that, you know, I'm not really making this for anybody else at the church. I'm really just kind of making this for you, <laughs> you know? And so I know that at least there's going to be a, you know, one or two options. Um, and then when, you know, I have to do a lot of coffee appointments and lunches and those kind of things, but the, the great part is I'm the one that's usually scheduling those things. And so if, if we're going to eat out somewhere, I'm going to go somewhere where I know that I, you know, it's a place where I could eat. It's something I can have. I I know how to calculate that into my, you know, numbers. And um, I've just, I've made it work. You know, I've, I've, I've made it work. And there have been those moments where I'm good. like, I'm good. Like, I don't, I don't know if I need that today or, 
you know, I had a little something before I came in or, you know, you know, whatever, you know, we have a, our first staff meeting of each month, uh, they bring in cakes and, and, uh, here in Texas, there's this thing called Kalat. You guys have heard Kalachis, of course, you know, and, and, oh, uh, how do you not, <laughs> right. You know, and they, you know, they're inundated us with all these Kalachis and just all this stuff. And, uh, I go over and, you know, I make, uh, I make my coffee, you know, I put a little bit of cream in it and I go and I sit down and I watch everybody, uh, eat. Here's the crazy part is I, I don't even really desire any of that anymore because I know how that used to make me feel. And it, I now attach all of that stuff to a, a time in my life. that wasn't good and wasn't healthy. And I don't want to ever go back to that. And it's not that I'll never sit down and, and, and enjoy something like that one of these days. Cause I might, but I might not either. It is my choice. I have given myself permission. I've empowered myself to say, Hey, if you really want that, you have the free will to go do that, Tony, you know? And so I don't feel like I'm locked up in a cage, like, Oh, just get me out so I could have a sniff of your kolache. You know, <laughs> like, that's not, that, that's not, that's not the life that I'm living. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and, and it's, it's been freeing. It's been liberating, you know? And I feel, I feel so much more empowered when I've allowed myself to just kind of have that mindset. It's made me stronger. It's made me better. And, and then I have people coming up after the staff meeting, patting me on the back, like, I wish I had your willpower, you know, like, well, I don't even know if it's willpower anymore. It's just a decision that I've made, you know, and, and I'm not, uh, you, you know, I think people put too much, uh, I think they put too much on food sometimes like foods good or it's bad or it's evil or it's not evil. And I just, I, I kind of stopped playing that game anymore. It's just food. And I'm choosing not to eat certain types of it and I'm better for it and I'm good with it. And, you know, that's kind of where I'm at today. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and it, like you were saying, it's a, it's it, cause for me, it's the same way. It's just as simple as a decision. You know, like, you know, I run around different collision centers all the time and, you know, f food trucks pulling up the collision centers is a normal thing, but you know, food trucks in Texas is quite a normal thing. So like, you know, I get offered food probably every time I'm in a shop, you know, anytime near lunchtime or first thing in the morning, because someone's bringing in breakfast tacos or something, and you know, just the simple, yeah, no thanks, I'm good, and that kind of goes a long way. But it, I'm, I'm the same as you to the point where, like, I look at it and like, yeah, I, I really have no desire to eat that. To be perfectly honest, you know, I'm yeah. not saying it out loud, but in my head, I'm like, no, I don't want that. Like, it, right? It, it, as the saying goes, the juice is not worth the squeeze. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so true. But, uh, so you're still you're still coming down, uh, and you so say you're still trying to come down on your weight to get to where you want to be. Um, yeah. Do you do any kind of training, any kind of working out, or are you just uh, managing all this uh, strictly, strictly through keto? Well, it was for the longest time. Yeah. I was just, uh, I was just doing uh, daily walks, you know, uh, working my way up to, I finally got up to about four or five miles a day. I was walking and, um, you know, just trying to go for a certain calorie burn per day. Um, but, right after I hit the, right after I hit the hundred pound mark, um, I kind of noticed, you know, that I was having to kind of work a little harder, uh, to get that same, you know, burn. And I was, you know, whatever. And so I started reaching out to some of the same peeps that kind of helped me in the beginning. And, and they just said, Hey, what are you doing for, you know, uh, for, are you, are you lifting? Are you, are you doing any, you know, are you doing any other type of cardio other than just walking, you know, that kind of thing. And so I, they started sending me some suggested, you know, workouts that, um, I would say that probably, they probably fit somewhere along the line of like a CrossFit, you know, kind of, you know, just kind of these daily things that you do. And, and, and so I've been slowly interjecting that into my daily routines and, uh, it's kicking my butt and it's been awesome because I, I'm finding a new, just kind of a new level of, of goals and of things that like, wow, okay, now I kind of have this to conquer and it feels good. Um, and kind of like how messy keto was in the very beginning, this is a little messy for me right now, but it is something that's becoming part of my daily routine. Um, and you know, you gotta, you gotta be inspired when you see, you know, Alberto lifting those weights every day, you know, and, uh, <laughs> I'm like, man, I, I want to be like that guy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that guy's really stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that I've talked about before for me, it's like, you know, I, I lived so much of my adult life extremely uncomfortable and hiding it. You know, and it was just how I managed to go through things, you know, because like everything that was wrong with me was on the inside other than being a little overweight, which I actually carried fairly well. You know, you'd never know. And so hmm. it's like now it's like the idea that I'm 100 percent in charge of the discomfort that I put myself through is awkwardly appealing to me. And so, you know, and then you get to the gym and, you know, realize you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Like the other week when I posted that PR video, like that deadlift hurt all the way up. Like, I honestly don't even remember most of it because you, you, you just like your adrenaline's pumping, everything's going and you, you just don't like you're in the moment and you don't really remember the entire lift. And it hurt from the yeah. bottom to the top and then back down. But when I got done, I was like, like kind of the opposite of how, uh, you know, Corey says it like, yeah, I did this to me, but I did this to me on purpose. And I thoroughly enjoyed every excruciating second of it <laughs> because, yep. because I was a hundred percent in control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. And that, and that's how it's supposed to be. And I think, th I think that's empowering right there, knowing that you are in control of something that's making you better. that's making you stronger, healthier, you know, compared to how we all used to live our lives, you know? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. So I'm 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 slowly, slowly getting more into a workout you know workout regimen and uh, and it like I said it's 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 a little messy right now. I'm asking a lot of questions. I'm doing of course I'm a researcher and so I'm I'm researching and and doing things. But every day I'm trying to add new things and trying new things and and um, just trying to be more active. You know and and it and it's hot. You know and my my gym um, is. Uh, they got so many Texas, um, this one gym for whatever reason just has a lot of restrictions. And so I haven't really been going. So I've been doing just a lot of stuff at the house and, but I'm also realizing like there's only so much I can do at the house. And, and so I'm, I'm looking at some other options right now. So. Yeah. Uh, working out during this season is, is very odd. I'm, I'm, doing my Kung Fu stuff all remotely. We're not doing, we're, we're doing parking lot in-person classes on Saturdays. That's the only in-person class that we've, we've got going on oh, right wow. now. So it's, uh, it's quite yeah. a lot um, to, to take in and definitely puts you out of your, there's something about going to the space and learning in the space, especially a space that has uh, pads on the floor that, that you can kneel down on and not hurt your knees and whatnot. Um, right. Yeah. But you know that that that's we're all having to adjust um, to to the scope of where where things are right now. Um, so other than you know continuing to to work out and try to get to to go weight, whatever that might be for you, what else is is next? Is that is there any ambition beyond that, or, or you just want to be healthy for yourself and and things like that? Well, yeah. Yes, I, I do want to be healthy for myself. I want to be able to, like I said earlier, I want to be able to always, you know, put my best foot forward in, in anything that I'm doing in my life, you know, and whether that's working for a church, whether that's doing, you know, I have some some out, outside of the church walls, you know, I have some opportunities that are that are starting to crop up for me. Um, I, you know, and I'd love to do kind of what you guys are doing and, and kind of approach it from a different angle and not just like you guys are this is awesome we're talking so much about the lifestyle the life the life change in keto and and i think i have a real heart for really you know kind of talking to people how how do we change you know holistically how do we change from that whole that body mind soul you know spirit all that stuff and and talk about a lot of different things not not just necessarily the weight loss journey but you know talking to people that that might struggle with uh, depression, that might struggle with anxiety, um, that might have just got out of a, a toxic relationship, you know. Um, and I think that's probably my pastor heart, you know, that, that that's coming into that and seeing how can I bridge the gap between the lifestyle change that I've made from a health standpoint and how can I bridge that with my pastor's heart and, and what does that look like moving forward so that ultimately I could help just a whole nother group of people moving forward. Um, I haven't figured it out yet, guys. Um, but every day I'm inspired by different things. I listen to your guys' show. I listen to different shows 
And I just love that there's voices out there that are going out that are helping people. And, you know, at the end of the day, the hope is that somebody listens, right? That somebody pays attention and there might be one nugget of information that was in that podcast and somebody walks away and says, you know what, I'm done. I need to start making some changes in my life. And at, at the end of that day, the rest of us are going, well done, right? Like that, that was exactly the reason why we were doing this because we want to help people ultimately. And, um, and, you know, I think that's your guys's heart. That's my heart. And so my ambition really is just to continue to do what I've been doing for the last 30 years. It just might look a little bit different as I move forward into kind of this next phase of my life. And, uh, in some ways trying to do the same, but at the same time, trying to reinvent myself a little bit. So one of our, our favorite questions that we, that we ask, uh, is, uh, and and you 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 kind of touched on the fact that you you were continually in this researching cycle and and whatnot. Yeah. What um what resources is it that you're uh, finding that 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 have been most helpful for you throughout the journey? And going along with that, what resources would would you or do you give those who are just getting started? Yeah. Um. So honestly, guys, you know, when I was first starting out, I was going to, uh, you know, just all the different kind of keto websites, you know, keto gains and, uh, you know, the savage one. I mean, there's just so many different ones out there and all of them, all of them had some good information. Some of them were vastly different. And I think, I think in the very beginning, I think that was, that was the confusing part was, you know, you'd look at one person's website and they would kind of say this and then you'd look at another person's website and they would say something similar, but then there was, there was a differences. But then what I try to do is just try to find the common threads between all of them. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, there's, there's the heart of it. That's what makes sense. Um, you know, but, but the, you know, the, honestly, you know, the Keto Man's Club has, you know, not to, not to suck up here. I mean, it's, <laughs> But I'm going no, to please go on. You no, know, yeah, yeah, because please. it's yeah, because it's been it really has been just kind of a you know for me it was kind of a kind of a light in a in a dark place. You know what I mean? It's like you're sitting in that dark room and you're flickering this lighter, and all of a sudden you get the light, and all of a sudden you could see a little bit better. And you know that's kind of that's kind of what this was for me. You know, when I started listening to people and hearing their stories. Um, I started realizing that I wasn't, I wasn't alone on an Island. You know, it wasn't just me out there that was having these same struggles. And it was awesome to hear other men talk about men issues, you know, like, Hey, we're all guys, we're all grownups. Like we could talk about all this stuff. And I just think it was so refreshing to just kind of feel a part of something that was a little bit, you know, a little bit bigger than me and just seeing all the different people's stories and everybody's different approach and everybody's cheering each other on. And, and even the healthy man banter that kind of that 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 kind of takes place, but it but it never gets to a point where it's like people are trying to shame you or anything like that. Like there's just some, you know, there's just some brotherhood that that that's been here. Um, you know, of course, uh, you know, Alberto, you mentioned uh, you, you mentioned Gormy, and you kind of took my thunder because you know he's kind of my he's kind of my shout out. Um, but you know he's he's literally been here for me pretty much since right around, you know, like the first week that I jumped into this thing. And, and even to this day, anytime uh, I've had a question or I just needed feedback or really just needed to talk to somebody, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's been there, you know, he's been there. And, you know, so the, for me, it really is the, the relational side of this for me and so my resources my community it's been things like the keto man's club it's been things like um you know the you know the fat guy forum um and and there's been other podcasts and 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 because of that community you get introduced to other people that are on the same journey as you all of our stories interconnected you know, all of our stories might sound different. They might look different, but there are parts of every single one of our stories that are absolutely still connected. And we go, yep, I get that. I understand that. I've been there. That resonated with me. And all of a sudden you find yourself doing that with multitudes of people. And that becomes one of the most healthiest, uh, 
you know, resources, you know, out there for me. It really has been surrounding myself with people that are on this journey. And I'm not just talking about the ones that are posting perfect pics of their face and their bodies and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the people that say, Hey, here's the good side of all this, but here's, here's the dark side. Here's the hard day. Here's the struggle. Here's the reality of my life today. You know, the guy that says, Hey, I've lost a hundred pounds. I've lost 200 pounds and I'm still battling depression. I'm still battling anxiety. I'm still, you know, those are the things that I really just kind of like chase after because those are the things that speak the deepest to me. And I would say at the end of the day, those are the things that have helped me the most. You know, I used to listen, like, obviously you guys know that music is a huge part of, of, uh, of my life. And so when I was getting, you know, back into walking and exercising, you know, music was, was kind of my go-to. Well, then I started listening to Keto Man Club. I started listening to, you know, Fat Guy Forum. Like I start that became the music in my ears during my workout and that became my inspiration. And so for several hours of any given day, that was constantly going in and I was listening to people's stories, where they've been, where they're where they're at today and where they're going. And um I would say that's been really the thing that has kept me going the strongest. And the fact that people take the time, uh they've taken the time for me when I needed it the most. And nobody, nobody's turned their back on me. You know? Right. Um and that I think that's been the the best part, you know, and everybody has a different personality. You know, you got some people on here that are more introverted and, and, and stuff, but he, but they're still, they still care and they still want to help where they can. And, um, and now I'm trying to do the same for other people. It's crazy. I hit the hundred pound mark and all of a sudden people think I'm like the, you know, a guru, you know, like, Oh, you know, <laughs> it's like some kind of magic number. And that I have like the secret, you know, I have the secret recipe. And really, it's just it's just, you know, being real with people and being consistent and, and trying to encourage people. And so every so everybody that did that for me, I'm having the opportunity to do that for other people now, too. And what a blessing that is. Right. Like, oh, I get it's full circle. Like two years ago, because my my keto anniversary is coming up in, in a month, you know, uh, two years ago when all this started and I was reaching out to all these folks. The fact that I'm getting to do that for people that are just starting their journey uh, has has just been it's been amazing, you know, to be able to speak into somebody's situation, to care for someone, to love someone, to show them that their life matters and that they're not defined by all the poor choices that they've made for the last two decades, you know, has has just been so rewarding for me, you know, and and I think it's the thing that keeps the fire lit for me, and it's the thing I think that's going to take me to, you know to go away and beyond and just trying to do my best, you guys, to, to help the world out and help all of us to be better. Absolutely. Well, we always like to uh, start winding things down. You, you, you have uh, summed up my heart and I know that this is Jim's and Jim and Alberto's heart as well, that that we're doing this because it's a a labor of love and we, we, we want to, share the good news of keto um, as, as best as we can. Uh, but, you know, on, on a very simplistic level, what's your favorite keto food, but you can't say steak like you did in your survey. <laughs> <laughs> can't see, so I, I can't say steak, but can I, can I stick to the, to the, can it still be some kind of beef? <laughs> well, you know, people have done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'll tell you what, moving, moving and and you guys down in Austin, you guys, you understand, you know, barbecue and, uh, uh, coming to Texas, like that's, I I now tell people that barbecue is like my love language. (laughs) And, um, I, I would have to say, you know, if I'm not allowed to steak, but if I can keep it in the beef category, you know, uh, I'm going brisket guys, smoked Mm -hmm. brisket. Alberto, I'm, I'm serious, man. I gotta, I gotta be. We, we got to do a phone call, my friend, because uh, I got to start picking your brain. Because I just bought a, I just bought a smoker, and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And um, I'm doing oh, a lot. Sure. You know, again, I'm, I'm the res, I'm the researcher. But sometimes it's good to talk to somebody that's been there and done that because I said, oh, don't, don't waste your time with this. This is what you want to be aiming for. But yeah, just 
just a you know just really a plate full of brisket uh you know for me is uh, i'm you know and if you're going to add some veggies to it it's going to be some brussels sprouts or you know something like that and i'm i'm a happy guy you know like that's i i feel like every time i sit down and eat i feel like i'm eating like a king and i have to pinch myself sometimes and go how how have i lost this amount of weight with this, you know, you know, you just have to laugh a little bit and, and walking away from the dinner table, satisfied, healthy, happy, feeling energized. Um, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. You know, I feel like we all have like this, I feel like we all have like this secret. That's not really a secret, but nobody really wants to know what the secret is. <laughs> if that makes sense, you know, um, they like their Coke too much and they like their pizza and they yeah. like their carbs too much. Yeah. And, and I, and I get that. Like, I get that. I was that guy for, for a lot sick. of years, you know? Um, but yeah, that's that coming, coming to Texas and, and being able to partake in, in some of the deliciousness, um, has, has been awesome. And, uh, so I would say that, you know, and of course there's, I have a, I have a list of favorite <laughs> foods, but that's, that's, that's going to be my go-to. If I can't, if I can't pick the one, I'm, I'm going with that. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't go wrong with brisket. I'll always allow that as an answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one of the last things we always ask our, our guests is, you know, how can people get a hold of you? And, uh, this leads into my very final question for the night. If you could tell us your IG handle and what the meaning is behind it. Yeah, sure. So IG, uh, IG handle is um, at Keto Collide, C-O-L-L-I-D-E. Um, so I have, a, I have this other project that, that actually has been out there since 2012. Um, and it's called Colliding, Colliding Moments. And the whole purpose of colliding moments back in the day was to um, walk alongside of other people that were, it started out with people that were in ministry, that were doing youth ministry specifically at the time, um, that were kind of walking through hard seasons of life that might have been burned out with uh, their jobs, their <laughs> senior pastor, you know, whatever the case may be. And and it really was just to try to be a place where people could go and check out. And it was just, it was meant for inspiration. And the whole idea of colliding moments is that at any moment in any of our lives, we have these moments that totally like can happen to us. These, these moments of impact, if you would, that can totally shape us, change us. And, and either side, it could be for the good or for the bad. And so my heart behind that was that if it was for the bad, that, that I wanted to come alongside of people. If you ever need to talk to somebody, if you need a, if you need a voice, if you need an ear, I want to be there for you. Okay. Um, and then for the people that were like, Hey, I had one of those moments, but it actually propelled me and launched me into something brand new and amazing. And then we wanted to like come alongside of those people and celebrate with them and, and let them know like, Hey, that's, that's amazing. So you know, almost two years ago when I was sitting there making a, you know, I wanted to create a, an Instagram that was just for my keto journey. Um, that was the first thing that popped in my mind. I just thought the word keto and collide. And, and, and you know, the crazy part, guys, I was hoping that one of these days somebody would ask me about that. <laughs> <laughs> and and you guys have. And that's that's really awesome because I don't know if I've ever actually been able to share I've talked about colliding moments before, but I, I don't know if I've ever actually talked about the, about the, the handle, you know? And so I appreciate you guys asking that because it has, it is actually a very personal part of who I am. It's a part of what I do and hopefully it's going to be a part of my future. And, um, um, so that's, you know, and I hope that people do reach out, you know, and, uh, we can, you know, chat it up and talk keto and talk about everything else under the sun too, you know? Absolutely. You're kind of a remarkable gentleman. <laughs> oh man. Well, I appreciate that. I, you know, I, I really do. Um, I'm just trying, you know what? We're, we're all in this together. You know, we're, we're all trying to get through life and through all of our struggles, our weaknesses, our successes, our failures. And you know the people in my in in my life that have been real and have been authentic and and sincere. Um, 
you know, I had a youth pastor. Can I share a story real quick? Yeah. Um, I had a, I had a youth pastor back when I was 14 years old. Okay. And, you know, I was still, you know, even at 14, I was still that latchkey kid. I was walking home from school and I would, I would stop at the, I would stop at the church office on my way home every day. And that poor youth pastor, you know, I'd come and I would just bug the heck out of him. And a lot of times he would give me, he'd give me chores at the church. He would, uh, back when they were still doing old school flyers, you know, with the printing presses, yeah. he'd, get, oh, he'd yeah. give me all that stuff and I'd get to go. And I thought I was like top dog and, you know, print, you know, printing the calendars for youth group that night and, and all that. But the thing that he always did for me was that he always stopped. You know, he always cared for me. He always told me that I mattered. He was always sincere, genuine, authentic, all those things. And ever since age 14, I feel like my whole life has been trying to replicate those moments with that with that guy. Mm-hmm. And, and, and everything that I do in my life moving forward, that's what I hope I leave people with. Like, I, that, that's what I want. You know, and so when you say that to me, I take that as a compliment because I hope, you know, it, it's never to be boastful or arrogant or any of that. It's, it's really because I really do. I want to leave everybody that I, that I come in contact with. I hope I leave them better than I found them. You know, like that, that's the hope and that's the dream for me. And, uh, and, and that's where all this journey kind of started. I realized that I don't know if that was happening anymore. I don't know yeah. if it was, a, it was enough. And I knew that I had to change and, and guys, I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that here I am a month away from a two year keto anniversary and I'm getting to be a hope, you know, getting to be on the keto man's club, you know, like, like, did I just make it to the big time? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, so I just, I just feel like, wow, what an amazing experience that, that people actually want to hear the, hear the story know the story, understand the story. And, and, uh, I just, I appreciate you guys taking the time. Absolutely. It's our pleasure, man. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys. Well, um, Tony, this, this has, uh, been an, an incredible conversation and, uh, you didn't know it, but we had our, we decided about halfway through, this is going to be a two-parter. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. So come out yeah. in two, two, two different chunks. Um, Wow. Uh, so let, let's say it one more time. How can, uh, what, what was your Instagram handle? And, and, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll close things up. Yeah. Instagram handle is at keto collide. Okay. Very good. Well, um, the rest of our socials, uh, you, you can find that in the, the show notes along with the link to our website, the keto man's uh, all of our social links are located there. Uh, you can leave a voicemail like I suggested earlier. Uh, you can email us at the Keto Man's Club, or I'm sorry, Keto Man's Club Podcast at gmail.com. And so you've got a lot of different ways to be able to reach out to us uh, on social media or otherwise uh, as, as a listener. Um, and again, if you do get the chance to leave a, a review or a comment on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you listen uh, to the podcast on, that that will help and go, goes a long way. We really appreciate you uh, investing that time into spreading the word. Uh, if you find that uh, Tony's story is going to resonate with uh, a family or friend, uh, a family member or friend, uh, would you share that? Would you share this episode or these two episodes with them? Uh, because it, it, I, I really, it resonates deep with, within me. And, and I, I think that me and Tony are going to be best friends here soon. Uh, yep. <laughs> because, that's because, the same thing he told me when we met. So don't, you know, take yeah, that. It, it, it <laughs> it um, but, oh, it's getting deep in Texas. I can say. <laughs> um, oh, that shiitake mushroom stuff. It's all <laughs> So, awesome. um, but it just, uh, I, I feel like there's a lot here in this story, um, that, that somebody out there needs to hear. And, mm. uh, so if you, if you think that, uh, it might help somebody else, please share it. Um, that's it for this week. Until next week, make sure to eat meat, lift heavy, sleep and repeat.
Thank you for joining us for the Keto Man's Club podcast. Your support means the world to us. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Would you help us spread the word about the Keto Man's Club by sharing with your friends and family? We're available on all podcast platforms, so just search for Keto Man's Club and you'll find us. If you would like to connect with us, you can do so a number of ways. Our web address leads to our Facebook group, theketomansclub.com. That's T H E. K E T O M A N S C O U B dot com. You can also follow us on Instagram at Keto Man's Club Podcast. Lastly, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out via email to Keto Man's Club Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to hanging out with you again next week. <laughs>